Hello everybody, Pope here. Um, we are back today with some top tier Japan. Um, so on this map here, which is Mazdok spawning on this side, we're going to immediately make a run as fast as we can going south to get um, southwest of that little ridgy area below the A cap. Um, on this particular map, if you can get over there, you can do some real damage shooting into the enemy completely unnoticed on their flank. And so here we've got some uh, targets out in the field. We'll take a pot shot at them because we're close to being below the, the ridge line. And uh, we're below the ridge line now, so we're pretty safe from shots. Um, talk a little bit about the Japanese Tier 10 main battle tanks, the, the Type 10 and the TKX. I don't know what the difference between them is. Um, they play exactly the same, in my opinion. They've got the same horsepower to ton ratio, the same armor, the same gun, the same ammunition, um, the same strengths, the same weaknesses. So... For all intents and purposes, you're going to play these vehicles exactly the same. Um, the Japanese, starting with the Type 90 and the Type 90B at 10.7, get auto loaders on their main battle tanks. Their reload is four seconds. Yes, four seconds. You're going to be able to shoot twice before most other people um, are going to be able to shoot once. And so that's fantastic. Um, it, it's great for peekaboo style um, gameplay, which is exactly what this is. It's great for engaging multiple targets on a flank, which is what this is, because you're going to be able to kill the entire enemy team before they even know you're there. And so we've got a T-80 BVM that was poking his head up over the ridge and uh, made him pay for it. And now we'll peek a little bit more, see what we can see. There's a guy right there um, being lasered, which means there is somebody in the back that spotted me. That is the danger of going to that spot. And unlike other main battle tanks, um, the Type 10s and the TKXs, the armor is completely and utterly unreliable. You don't want to take shots. Um, you, you, can't, you can't go hull down. You can't tank shots in the turret, at least reliably. Sometimes the armor can be trolly and you'll get a couple bounces, but you have to be really, really careful in these vehicles because they're very soft. Um, anything with... 30 millimeter or larger rounds is going to be able to penetrate you frontally. I'm talking about um, 2S 38s, um, any of the Finnish infantry fighting vehicles, anything with an auto cannon pretty much that's not a 20 mil or less is going to be able to penetrate you frontally. So you need to be really careful with this vehicle in terms of the peaking. So we've got a, um, we moved a little bit to try to put a little bit of space. Um, a little bit of hard cover, i.e. the hill to the right-hand side where we were getting shot before. And uh, we'll manage to get up there and make two real quick kills on a T-80 UK and a T-80 U. And so in this position over here, the only thing, now that I know that there's somebody looking at me, um, the only thing that's going to be able to hurt me is Cass. That's, that's the only thing that, that really poses any kind of a real significant danger to me is helicopters, drones, or airplanes. Um, from this spot over here, if you're careful and you do it right, you, you're never going to get hit again. So there is certainly somebody um, who is spamming their laser rangefinder at you. And this tank does have a laser rangefinder warning. It's got an RWR on it. So it lets you know when somebody's uh, shooting laser beams in your direction. Um, they don't necessarily have to be coming at you. They don't even necessarily have to hit you. It's just anything within whatever range it is. Um, it shows up, so um, it can be pretty annoying at times, but it's also incredibly useful. And so we were able to kill a T-80 UK there, and that's uh, kill number four. And as our team is moving pretty strongly south, um, it doesn't make much sense to stay back in the back where I was. So we're going to move up and uh, start to get some, some shots into their spawn. And they've got a little bit of movement out there in the back, so we'll let him feel safe. Take the shot, kill the BMP-2M. That's number five. There's a couple more vehicles here. We've got a T-80 of some kind right there. Uh, it's a BVM. He's dead. That's number six. And we'll just wait for some more folks to spawn. Give them a few seconds to come out of their uh, spawn protection. Peek back up over the hill and get some more kills. So we've got somebody... Who's doing some ridgeline humping right over there? Um, not gonna really give us a shot. So, back, back down, relocate just a little bit, so that if there's anybody watching for us, we don't pop up in the same place. Now, one of the really cool things about 
um, the Japanese main battle tanks, starting with the Type 74G, is it's got a hydro pneumatic suspension. Um, that means that you can adjust the height of the tank, the, the, the chassis, you can adjust its height, whether it tilts left or right, or whether it tilts forward or backwards. And so um, one of the really cool things about being on a hill like this is that if you make your tank dip down a little bit, you can get a lot of extra gun depression. I think effectively this tank has about when it's when it's in full forward tilt, it's got about 20 degrees of gun depression, which is ridiculous. The downside to that, though, is that it's only got 10 degrees of gun elevation. Um, you're going to find that that's going to be a very limiting. Um, if you're going over hills up and down, up and down, the lack of gun elevation in this vehicle is is, is going to be problematic at times. And so when you're tilted down like I am right now, you can see the forward part of the tank is lower than the rear. Um, it, it's going to give you terrible gun elevation. You're not going to be able to shoot aerial targets and you're not going to be able to shoot up when you're on the downslope of a hill. So um, as, I, as I predicted a little while ago, the only thing that's going to be of any real danger to me is Cass. And um, there's a there's an SPAA. It's a pant seer sitting in their cap. That's kill number seven. But Cass has already figured out where I'm at. I've already had a Hellfire launched at me. There's already been a missile impact next to me. So hopefully by popping some smoke, um, the duration on your smoke charges is 20 seconds. So hopefully by popping some smoke once or twice, you can get the, the cast interested in something else. Um, this particular guy seems very interested in me. His missiles are impacting all around me. And so I, I, I fully expect that um, what's going to happen here is as soon as I'm out of smoke, he's going to find me and I'm going to die. But there's nothing, there's, there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. I just have to have hope that... Uh, yeah, I have to have hope that the air and the SPA on our team can take care of him. So that was a KA-50 that killed me, and all he had was rockets. So that was a second that was a second air vehicle that was that was looking at me. And as you can just see, the Japanese have absolutely no competent SPAA. We've got a Type 93, which is an ocelot without the radar. Um, it's fast. You may be able to get a lock on on something real close with it with the with the IR missiles, um, but. At the end of the day, you're you're basically a truck with no armor, and you are incredibly susceptible to cast. <laughs> it's just just kind of the way it is. Your your anti-cast vehicle is very subjected to cast, and so um, with that done, the rest of their team is mostly in planes. There's very little left to do in this match except mop up, and so at this point in time, rather than continue to watch absolutely nothing happen for the rest of the match, I'm just going to go ahead and skip to the end. And so here we are at the end, came in first place, had seven kills, one assist. And as a reward for this match, we made 11,000 research points and about 57,000 silver lions. And so here we are in the, um, in the next match. And in this one, I've got a camouflage on the tank. Um, this is, in my opinion, the most beautiful camouflage I've ever seen. I could do without the anime. I have no idea who Hibiki is um, or what she's from. But the combination of red, that bold red and the white and the, the, the gun steel blue is just, it's absolutely spectacular in my opinion. And so this is the TKX and I love running this camo on my TKX because it's just absolutely wonderful to look at. But like I said in the in the last video, the TKX and the Type 10, they play exactly the same. Four second reload. Um, the tanks are really, they're kind of, they're not as quick as you would think they are. There's a, they've got an acceleration problem in my view that exists in real life. Um, they've got a lot of torque though, which means they're going to turn from left and right really, really fast and really, really hard. It's different than any other main battle tank you're going to be in. You're going to oversteer a lot in these vehicles. And so I don't know if it's an issue with the with the transmission or I don't know what the issue, what the issue is, but um, on the Type 10 and the TKX especially, you're going to see they're going to traverse on the chassis really, really fast, but they don't accelerate really as fast as you would expect them to with the horsepower to ton ratio that they're at. So in this map, even though it's single cap, this is a um, an important point in my opinion. This allows you to prevent the enemy team from getting along the flank on the north hand side. And so we come around the corner, kill a turns. We'll 
come back through, and you can see right there how fast this thing traverses left and right, but how slow it seems to accelerate. And so that's that's the mobility advantage disadvantage that, that you've got with this vehicle. So my teammate is telling me there's somebody behind that building, but I'm too stupid and I don't look, so I don't see him. There's a number of tanks in there. Um, there's at least two that I can see, so we'll peek through, shoot one, and I get killed by uh, T-80 UK shooting heat at me because I'm stupid and didn't see him hiding in the back along the back. And so if, if I'd have played that better, what I would have done is I would have raised my chassis up. I would have elevated it up, made the tank taller, and just shot through the windows. But I wasn't thinking that at the time. Uh, I was just, I was being, I forgot one of the advantages that this tank has is the ability to make itself taller or shorter. So we are now back in the, the Type 10 as a backup. And uh, again, it's another anime skin that, that I thought was really nice looking. It's somebody called Sakura Empire. And it's, I guess it's, this thing's pretending to be the Musashi battleship. But it's got purple in it, and purple is my favorite color. So, purple and black in this combination, I think, is really awesome to look at. So, you'll see me running a lot of anime skins on my uh, Japanese tanks. I think a it fits, and um, it's also nice to look at. So we'll come back to the same spot, um, carefully creep up towards the edge, see if there's anything we can see coming around the corner, and there is, and there's an M1A2 Sep who killed him. There's somebody behind him. Yeah, I don't know if they've pulled forward. Yeah, they have. It's a BMP2M. Um, he was hiding behind the corpse, but he pulled forward and died for his troubles. And so that's two really quick kills. So we will let that Leopard 2A5 be the meat shield. Um, he's going to discover if there's anybody up there on the right. He discovers there's nobody, so we'll pull out safely. Come in behind him. There's definitely some kind of a helicopter up, although it looks like our tour took care of it. And I want to make sure that this area here on my left is clear, because as you can see from the mini-map, um, we've only got a few players left. There's only one of their guys that's been spotted, so I, I don't want to uh, I don't want to rush out and be too too aggressive. That's the really the really fascinating thing about the gameplay of the Japanese vehicles is you would think that they would promote a very aggressive gameplay style because of the reload speed, but because they can't really take a shot, they can't take a hit, they don't they don't tank anything. You almost have to be aggressively defensive with them, if that makes any sense. Meaning you find good points to hold, and you're very good at holding against multiple enemies. If you can get to a flank, you're really good against pushing multiple enemies. But going at anybody frontally in this vehicle, it is not going to result in anything good happening to you, you're just going to die. And so there's a, a Puma or a BMP, there's some kind of an infantry fighting vehicle that's making his way up around me to the left, to the north, so I turn the engine off so he can't hear me and we'll be a rat and uh, do an absolutely rat thing and just hide in plain sight and wait for him to come around the corner. No, it's not terribly exciting gameplay to watch, um, it's not terribly exciting gameplay to engage in, but it, it, it's effective, especially for this guy who's trying to take his time. And um, there he is, he sees me, it's a 2S38, and uh, take him out, kill him, turn the engine back on something else to do. So as I was getting ready to go in through this building here, I saw a cheeky little Abrams who was uh, trying to be sneaky. He's looking at me. He, he, he knows where I'm at. He knows I'm there. And uh, take a pot shot at him. Don't do any damage. He now knows I'm there for sure. Um, and that's just one of those occasions where I was betting that my reaction time was going to be faster than his. That was not a, um, that wasn't a smart move. That wasn't an intelligent move. It was just, I was, I was betting that my reaction time was faster than his and ended up paying off. And sometimes that's what the game comes down to. Sometimes it comes down to calculated risks and, uh, completely random 
completely random because I don't think that guy did anything wrong. Um, he knew where I was, I knew where he was, I just pushed my mouse button faster. So unlike the, um, some previous videos I've put up with, um, the Leclerc and the WZ, the Chinese Tier 10s and the Russian Tier 10s, and even the Americans, um, I'm a lot more cautious on this vehicle because of the fact that it can't take a hit. So I'll fast forward a little bit here um, to get to the last remaining little bit of action in this video. Um, cautiously making my way through the buildings. I got a marker that there's somebody here pop around the corner. It's a T-72. Pay attention. Actually, it's a T-80. And uh, we'll knock him out real quick. And that is going to be the uh, the last kill of the match. So we get a heavy metal hero. Seven kills, two assists, one death. And as reward for our efforts, I'm going to get 55,000 lions and 11,500 research points. So that is the Type 10 in TKX. I appreciate y'all watching. Uh, thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you next time and take care.